the Green Bay Classic. Rounding out tonight's telecast, it's 36-year-old Bill Oakes seeking his first ever career PBA title, and talented Rick Steelsmith making his third appearance in the championship round this year. Welcome to Red Carpet Lanes, located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, along with Mike Durbin. And any sports fan who has watched television or read the newspaper the past month has done nothing but read and hear about the Dream Team. Well, this week, Mike Albee provided us with the Dream Block. It came in round number three, Mike. He averaged 262, had a 300 game, and struck on 35 of 37 shots. Did you ever have a round like that? Danny, in 20 years of bowling out on the PBA Tour, I never had a round like that. It's just kind of a round where Mike got into a zone where he just knew that he was going to strike. He wasn't worried about leaving seven pins. He wasn't worried about anything, just throwing strike after strike after strike. But I think what he is thinking about, though, tonight, Danny, is if he wins tonight, he has a chance to join six other players and having 20 victories. That's a milestone. When he came out of Wichita State as an All-American, everybody knew that Rick Steelsmith was going to be a superstar. There was no question about that. He was the first amateur ever to win the ABC Masters, then a ligament tear, and he is still not 100%. No, we just talked to him a few minutes ago. He said he's about 90% right now. The shoulder's getting better every week. Last year, he had to take tournaments off after a hard week and to rest the shoulder. It would hurt, but now he doesn't have to do that. He's still throwing a 15-pound ball. Whaley really gets healthy, but tonight he could win his first singles title. Only one player this year has successfully defended a title on the PBA Tour. That, of course, was Dell Ballard Jr., and yet tonight Tony Westlake has an outside shot. Well, Tony, one of the more steady players on the PBA Tour, but this year has been kind of an off year for him. He's only made about 40000 He is the defending champ here. He always seems to find a way to win in the summertime, but four wins tonight will be tough for him. Lots of pressure for our number four qualifier here this evening, Eric Forkel. He's the tour's leading money winner, and he could become the first three-time winner this year. And I think with Eric, in order to have a chance to be bowler of the year this year, that a win tonight is almost a necessity, or a win somewhere the rest of the year. He's got two victories. He won our PBA National Championship, but he's only made the championship round three times, so I think he needs to win tonight to have a legitimate chance at that bowler of the year. And Billy Oaks has qualified number five. He's still looking to put the pieces of the puzzle together in the championship round and win his first tournament. Well, his championship round performance is only two and seven. But he's looking to improve that tonight. He says he can't do anything but get better. Four wins, though, is going to be a tough task for him. All right, should be an interesting telecast. Stay tuned. The opening match just about ready to start, featuring the Tour's leading money winner, Eric Forkel, and also Billy Oaks. Billy Oaks will start the match on the left-hand lane. A high-scoring pair of lanes. Lanes 15 and 16. Our top five pros averaged a little better than 240 this week on this pair of lanes. Yeah, Mike Alpe really liked it. He averaged 269 on this pair. Mm. Well, he only averaged 240 for the week. <laughs> yeah, that was just a little above his average. There you go. Oaks comes out firing and throws a flush strike on lane 15. He has had all sorts of problems getting off to a good start. Well, his TV record, like we say, is 2-7. and seven. Uh, He just gets those feet going so fast, he gets so pumped up. What he's been working on this week is bowling at an even keel. Robert Lawrence, his roommate, has been trying to get him not to get too high, not to get too low. Steady Eric Forkel comes out, hits the pocket on the other side, and strikes on 16. And both these players really have something to prove tonight. Forkel is extremely intense because he knows that he has an opportunity if he wins tonight and wins four games to become a, you know, a legitimate candidate for bowler of the year. But Billy Oaks is just as determined to try and bowl well on television and get his first win. Earlier this year, Forkel collected $55,000 when he won the PBA National Championship. Very low-scoring affair there. They were all grind-out matches until the championship match. And Bob Vespi just was lost and never had a chance. Out near the twig. Pack, pack for Eric Forkel, who starts with a double. You can see the intensity on Forkel as he's just uh, super concentrated. Billy Oaks, 36 years of age, has won a regional title, but uh, never has won a national championship. I think his best effort is third. Set it down early, got it into the oil, needs a little help, 
and a tantalizing 10 pin finally dropped. Well, boy, that was the head pin that went to the sideboard and took its time coming back to get that 10 pin. <laughs> it went around and delivered the message, even though it seemed a little late to Mr. Oaks. Very confident this week. Played between 5 and 10. He said virtually every game throughout the entire tournament. Well, you know, his speed is, is his biggest asset. He throws hard, and he's using a ball now that hooks a lot, so he can't throw this ball too hard. It's always going to come back. Five shots, five strikes, and we're off to a very fast start. Well, that's the way it's been all week. The scores have been extremely high all week long. Took a 223 average to make the top 24. You watch him now. Not your classic style, right about over the second arrow where there's more oil there. He moved in later toward that in the last part of the practice. Corporal shot rolls up. He gets the light hit carry, and we're still even after three frames. Six for six. This is one of those uh, weeks, one of those championship rounds where if you don't start with the first four or five, you're going to be 30 behind. Eric using a uh, harder surface ball and banking the cutter, playing out in the dry area of the lane, and letting the lane just fling the ball back in the one-two pocket. Like that. Well, you have to like that execution. Forkel, who is the tour's leading money winner, would go over $160,000 tonight if he would end up winning this title. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And there's a long way to go yet. Yeah. You can get that 200,000 plateau. Trying to keep pace. Oh, and he does. Billy Oak says the first four, and I had a chance to chat with him earlier before the telecast and asked him, hey, you've had trouble in the championship round. What are you going to do differently here tonight? I'm just going to focus in on uh, on my game, focus in on what's going on in the lanes. If I have any problems, make sure I figure out what's going on. And if I can stay focused on what's going on and bowl inside myself, I think I can win tonight. And that's what I plan to do. Right over about the eighth board, watch this ball roll out at the pocket. Kind of stops right there and gets a great break to trip out the four and the nine. a 10 pin stops the run after four consecutive strikes for Bill Oates. You know, Billy's roommate is Robert Lawrence and that, I was talking with Robert earlier and that's exactly uh, what Robert's been talking to him about. In the past, Bill would let uh, his bad breaks affect him early in the game and he would get down on himself and get all upset. This week, he didn't bowl a game under 200 until about the 30th game of the tournament because he would stop and try and figure out what's going on and bowl in a more detached manner, not get so emotional. Now we'll have to sit down and hope that uh, Eric Forkel doesn't continue to string. Something that I was never able to do in 20 years. Out. <laughs> well, that's not an easy task. No, it isn't. Uh, especially if you're a competitor. Well, we know Billy's a competitor. Ooh. Very calm, very cool. And a five-bagger for Mr. Forkel. So what a nice reaction. He actually got that ball a little bit right about the third board or so, and it just kind of held and comes in light. He swings it out to the first board, and it just hooks back flush. Colorized oh, version tonight of bowler track. Yeah, we see at 30 feet is about four and a half uh, board. It's seven at 45 feet. So it's already started. It's moved back 19.2 miles per hour. It doesn't look like he's throwing that hard. It's going so straight, that's why it's going harder. Oh, boy. Talk about wired. Porkel, halfway home, has the first six. Leads by 21 in a high-scoring affair from Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin. If you're into working out, Bud Light invites you to get ready for the ultimate workout. The Bud Light Triathlon Series. Just try it. We 
I've just discovered an artifact used by Columbus himself on board the Nina. That's a mug from Long John Silver's. Just 99 cents with any meal. I have a complete set. We just discovered a complete set of artifacts. At the first tickly itch of athlete's foot, get an X. Killing those grungy fungi before they get racket and burning. Go get that can now, or else don't blame Desonex. The championship round finals of the Green Bay Classic are being brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by America's Place to go for fish. Go fish at Long John Silver's. Billy Oaks down by 21, and all he did was start with the first four. And I'm looking at Eric Forkel right now. He's got the first six, and he's got a piece of tape. No, he's putting it in his spare ball. Then he, is he going to have a spare to shoot? He just wants to be prepared. Oaks has to maintain some type of pressure and a quality shot by Billy on the right-hand leg. And, you know, you, you see how he moved in against the oil on that one. That ball didn't look like it was going to make it, but that's that new urethane ball that just turns over at the back end and warm. Watch it here now. It's going to hit around the second arrow, right around 10. It looks like it's light here. Now watch it turn left and get the 10. The 6 goes up the wall and knocks out that 10. And we see 19 points. Boy, these guys are amping it up, aren't they? This right. is speed here. Fastballs. Zips it out again. Rolls back nice and high and flush into the pocket. So a double back up on the board for Oaks. And he cuts the lead to 11. And hey, Billy's right now got to be thinking, i got to wire it out. 279, i got to go all the way. That's what I'd be thinking. Only average 250 on this pair of lanes. Very corkle. Twig action. That's the flaming G, Denny. Oh That's the flaming my. G. He was out there on the lip. How can a ball hook that much? Watch this. It's out to the G right on that first board and rips back into the one-two pot. The flaming G. The flaming G. That's when it comes screaming back. Slightly slower because he swung it a little bit more. We see out to one and a half at 30 feet. <laughs> he knew it was a strike all the way. He wasn't worried. Lots of loft. Tie. Oh, did he hang up Mike, or was he playing that much long? No, he, he wasn't a clean release, Dan. Not a clean release. You see him. <laughs> Billy Oaks moving around in the chair. There's the, all right, he stopped. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he's ahead on count. Right? That's, hey, isn't that wild? 247, not an easy spare. Eric, a very good spare shooter. Accuracy is the name of this game. Well, the thing is, Billy Oaks steps up and throws two strikes, and he goes into the lead one at a time. He, the way he's hitting that left lane, I would think that this is the big shot right here. All right. Left a 10-pin on the right-hand lane in the fifth frame, the only blemish in the first seven shots. More pressure on this shot, though, Denny. I mean, you can see him taking a little bit more time. Let's see what he does. Watching his feet that time. He's had a penchant for getting a little quick in the clutch, and that ball rolled up and left the four pin. Yeah, it kind of rolled. And, and I don't think it was as much speed. Uh, it just appeared to me that it wasn't as quick. He kind of stroked it. And the ball, when it starts to make its move now, it looks like it's really going to go high, and it kind of rolls out right here for only the four pin. And you see, it was, uh, you know, about a half a mile an hour slower than the one before. That's the difference. The difference between a strike and a four pin. Exactly. He's still not out of the match. He's down 19 pins. He must strike here in the ninth frame. Could still shoot 258, but that might not be enough in terms of pin total to get past the opening match. Well, Forkel's got to have a double to surpass that. He's going in a 257 pace if he would spare a strike out.
Lots of room. And the message again. So Billy Oak sets up the 10th frame with hopes of having some shot at winning match number one. And watch the reaction. Watch the head hit off to the sideboard. Comes flying off of there at about 38 miles an hour and like a bullet shoots down the tin. Incredible how fast those pins move it. Good release. And a love tap, but it's a little late on the seven pin. Well, the situation then is he must make the seven pin, which I'm very confident that he will do, and then he has to step up and throw a double in the tenth frame to lock this match up. As it should be in a high scoring affair. No problem. Spare up for Forkel, and I talked to Eric and asked him, is there more pressure? Do you feel more pressure being the tour's leading money winner this year? Yeah, I, I think about being a leading money winner. I mean, it's kind of hard not to. I mean, every time I bowl a pro-am, they announce a leading money winner and this and that. And, you know, you got all these great bowlers out here coming after me. And and I, it would be it would be an honor to be the leading money winner at the end of the year. You see the humility in the man. Trying to stay alive. And needs a little help. Six pin. Stands on lane 15. And Forkel, who started with the first seven, may be eliminated. I think there's a very good chance. Uh, Billy Oaks, you know, had the chance in the eighth frame, and now he gets kind of a second life. Knows he's going to have to step up there and throw two strikes. The count really is not the big issue. Although he'd still have to get eight if Eric picks this up and strikes. Very solid game. Just one errant shot, the one in the eighth frame. Kind of lost the left lane, though, in the last two frames. He went the two, four, seven, and that was high six pin all the way. That really wasn't in the pocket. Strike here gives him 255. It may not be enough. Oaks has room for 258. Tony Westlake not bothering to throw any practice shots. He's next in line. Then Rick Steele Smith and our top seed, Mike Aldi. Terrific game for Eric Forkel. The question now is, will it be enough? Well, Billy has to take him one at a time. He must strike on this shot in order to have a chance. Last trip on this lane, a little slower in speed perhaps, and he left the four pin. Well, he knows that speed is his asset, and I'm sure he's thinking, keep the speed up. Zip that shot. That has to be a helpless feeling. It is a helpless feeling when you're sitting there because you're you're almost positive the guy's going to strike. It's hard to be thinking anything positive for yourself at that time, you know. And and you're just thinking, well, well it's just a lost opportunity. But of course, he hasn't lost yet. Billy still has to throw a strike here and get eight pins. Without question, the biggest shot in his career. Rolled out, still got the 10. He gave it room. He trusted it all the way. A quick scan of the scoreboard. Watch it. He gives it more room then. Out to about the seventh board. Now watch the six. Watch the six. Comes off and just gives it the pink. And now he needs eight to win. Eight to win. We could have a tie. Terrific finish for Billy Oates. What a terrific opening match. Forkel is eliminated after shooting a game of 255. Meanwhile, Billy Oates finally wins a game in the championship round, and he shoots 257. When we come back, we'll take a look at uh, how you try and work on your release. 
GMC truck built America's first gasoline-powered truck and went on to make trucks our only business. Trucks that some say worked a little harder, lasted a little longer. And that's still true today. In a truck that gives you the most standard payload and the strongest resale of any full-size pickup. Sierra, from GMC Truck, more proof of the strength of experience. See your Susquehanna Valley GMC truck dealers. It's an ordinary town somewhere in America. Over 6,000 movies played here last year. Every session of the U.S. Congress was held here. So were 350 Major League Baseball games. Eric Clapton played guitar in the bar on the corner. And Steve Martin told jokes at the barbershop. Just an ordinary town with ordinary people who count on their local cable company to bring them home delivery of the world. You take the world, I'll take Kevin Costner. Average Builders is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite pan pizza. For tonight's Average Builder, I thought I'd like to look at three different types of releases and the role that these releases create and look at the strengths and weaknesses of each one. The first one I like to look at is what we call the full roller. As you can see by the tape, a full roller rolls right between the thumb and the fingers. Now, how's it thrown? Well, basically, my thumb is at about a 10 o'clock position, kind of like I'm going to shake hands, and the thumb rotates upward toward 12 o'clock, but not past 12 o'clock. It kind of looks like this. I'm right in this position. As I let it go, the thumb turns up toward 12, the fingers lift the ball, and it rotates like this as it goes down the lane. Well, what are the strengths of the full roller? Well, the first strength is that it goes relatively straight, so it's easy to control. It's usually easy to hit the pocket and easy to make spares. It works best on dry lanes. Its weaknesses are it doesn't hit real hard, so you leave a lot of corner pins and it's hard to string strikes, and it doesn't work real well on oil. Well, what's the next release? It's what we call a three-quarter or semi-roller. It can roll below the thumb hole, even right next to the thumb or as much as an inch below. Well, how is it thrown? Well, it's just the opposite of the three-quarter. My hand is right behind the ball, and my thumb rotates counterclockwise like this. It looks something like this. Here I am behind the ball. As I let it go, my thumb turns down, the fingers rotate around, and the ball rotates like this going down the lane. What are the strengths of the three-quarter? Well, I think its biggest strength is its versatility. Depending on an individual's talent, a three-quarter roller can go either straight or with a lot of hook. It can be played from the outside or the inside, or it can have a lot of revolutions or very few. Well, what's the last release? The last release is what we call a spinner. That's where the track is way below the thumb hole, up to four inches down below the thumb and the fingers. How is it thrown? Well, very similar to the three-quarter roller, only more so. As I come out of the ball with the spinner, my thumb comes out very quick, and my wrist tilts down, and the fingers go over the top of the ball like so causing the low track on the ball. What this causes as a result is the ball goes a long way down the lane before it goes into a roll, so it works real well on dry lanes. It doesn't work so well on oily lanes. Well, what's the best release? Well, I think that the best release is probably the three-quarter or semi-roller because it's used by the overwhelming majority of our pros. But the release that is probably best for you is the one that you do naturally. So try and perfect it. We'll see you again next week from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania with another average builder. And if you have trouble in the meantime, especially with that release, see your local PBA pro. Game number one, and a dandy it was, 257 to 255. How would you like to start with the first seven and lose the opening match? That's what happened to Eric Corkle here this evening. And let's take a look at the rest of the top 24. Don Moser sixth, and Walter Ray Williams was seventh. And Rich Abood, former end, uh, or a uh, National Resident Pro Champion, and Roger Bowker won just a couple of weeks ago. And in 10th place, Tom Baker, Dave Husted with another steady performance. Scott Devers there. David Ozio in the finals. Been a little bit of a slump for him this year. And in 14th place, Kevin McCurr and Dave D'Entremont was 15th. And Dave Watka, he was on the telecast here last year. Jason Couch, we saw him recently. 18th after the week, Mark Thayer and uh, Ricky Ward was 19th. And Alan Bishop and Philip Ringen are steady Phil. And filling out the top 24, Tony Kreitz was 22nd, and Derek Williams was 23rd. And, of course, Brad Kaczewski, former Rookie of the Year, and our alternate, Jeff German. All right, when we come back, 
The defending champion will take on Billy Oaks in what more than likely will be a strike fest. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Here I am, a pillar of the community. And I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. In business meetings, I look around and wonder, am I the only one? Those sweet, crunchy flakes and a splash of cold milk. What could an adult like better for breakfast? I'm crazy about the taste. Hey, I got nothing to hide. <laughs> it's easy to see. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Get hooked every Saturday morning on ESPN Outdoors. It's an adventure you won't want to miss. Explore the world's best fishing holes and hunting grounds. Learn how the pros don't let the big ones get away. Experience ESPN Outdoors every Saturday morning on ESPN. Tony Westlake in search of career victory number five and also wants to become a second player this year and the same championship as he did the year before and it's not easy to do defend out here on the national tour now the next task for for billy oaks is he's come through when that first game is to stay on that even keel don't get too high because you won the game because you got three more to win keep the speed up that's always important and he does beautiful shot on lane 15. See, it helps when you have a good friend who's been through the wars before like this. They can say, hey, you know, I'm right here with you. You know, this is where you, you need to be thinking, and uh, let's work on it together. Tony Westlake always comes out firing from the hip. Does so here, and the man from Edmond, Oklahoma, X's in frame number one. Tony holding the ball down low. Slides that first kind of a half step. Now it's basically four steps. Look at it at the top. Right in time, look how steady the head is. Good slide and see the follow through. Right up past his ear. Had a dismal winter tour, took a couple of weeks off at the end and uh, is just now getting his gain and his confidence back. One of the more consistent players over the last five years on the tour and circled that shot and was fortunate to leave the two and the eight without some company. You see, his ball is not reacting the same as Billy Oaks. When Billy Oaks gets it too wide like that, it makes a left turn and winds up in the pocket. I mean, just looking at the ball reactions between the two players, I would say Oaks definitely has the advantage in this match. 18.4. It almost be like two players hitting two different style golf balls, and one guy's hitting the 25 yards past the other guy. Very similar, yeah. Oaks, who came into the championship round tonight, Mike, averaging 187 in the final five. Got 257 in the opening game. It'll raise that average a little bit. You see, he got that one in, and it held all the way. We saw him in the 10th frame swing it wide, and it comes back. When a bowler sees that kind of reaction, Dan, and he knows that he's got a little hold area, and if he throws it good with speed to the right, his confidence goes up, and he starts throwing it better and better and better especially if you're a fairly straight player who's an accurate player to begin with. Right. And you give a, a straight player a couple of boards to the right, oh, their eyes just light up. Yeah. And so does the scoreboard. For three in a row. Ooh. A little overturn this time and a break for Billy Oaks. 
soft on the speed again, just not the speed that he had before. Gets it wide of the second arrow, starts breaking too soon right now. Kind of quits at the pocket and has the 4, 7, 10. The 6 gives an extra nudge to the 10 and knocks it out of there and he's satisfied. Take the spare. Boy, two shaky shots and he got a spare out of it. You know that things are going right for you when that happens. And he knows that too. Tony Wesley down by eight pins. Now, Tony told me in practice that the left lane was hooking one board more for him. So maybe that's what he played the first frame and it didn't come back. It'd be interesting to see if he moves a board to the right on this shot to try and play it the same as the right lane. A strike here and he takes the lead. And this is the lane he picked to finish on. He had the choice. A little more turn. And he's left with a dinner bucket. He's got to make some kind of adjustment then. That's two in a row. And he's got the two and the eight both times. This time the two and the eight has company. Unwelcome company. Mm -hmm. Crowded room on lane 15. Plus you lose, well, you don't lose the pin count. He's on a strike. You know, he's only going to lose count if he doesn't make it. Perfect. Beautiful shot by Tony Westland. And we have ourselves a very tight match. Let's see if Billy Oates can get back on track. on the rise. Pretty shot. Absolutely pretty shot there. A very determined confidence, Billy Oates. Right over that second arrow again. Swung it out a little bit. Rolled back on a nice even arc that time. Really stayed with that shot a long time. And I'm sure he's thinking right now, maintain your speed on this left lane. Oh, boy, zip there. Oh, yeah. The 10, 10 heard that speed. <laughs> the six pin whistling right around the 10, and that was a shot at a second double, and it would have been an 18 pin lead. Yeah. Watch it up close and personal here. Very personal when that six doesn't hit the ten. Cross lane at the ten pin. Bounces it in there. Tony Westlake with two strikes on the right hand lane, but left hand lane has been the problem for both players. Tony Westlake quickly becoming the Mike Durbin of the telecast. One lane out. That's it. <laughs> one lane bowler. <laughs> Greatest one lane bowler in the history of the PBA, Mike Durbin. Yep, that's for sure. But you figured out the left hand lane a couple times. A couple of times. Yeah. At least it's comforting to know that you can strike on one of them. Well, he's figured out the left one now, too. Took a couple of shots, but Tony Westlake beginning to zero in on the championship round there as he takes a two-pin lead. It's a big investment. Get the most out of it. Change the oil every 3,000 miles. And do it yourself with quality Pennzoil motor oil from Walmart. Only Pennzoil promises performance, protection, quality. And only Walmart gives you Walmart savings every day of the year. Every 3,000 miles, put fresh oil in your car. But first, come to Walmart and put Pennzoil in your cart. Your car will last longer. Your budget will, too. Walmart. Always. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with Vic? I'm a big man. 
because there's a big for every beer. Regular, sensitive metal. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. It's that easy to pull yourself away from a bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Two scoops that taste too good to pull yourself away. Two scoops that taste too good in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Two scoops. And while we were away, this was an excellent shot by Bill Oaks. Same thing he's been doing on this right lane every time, right around the second arrow, flush in the 1-3 pocket. This one looks almost exactly the same, over the second arrow, flush in the 1-3 pocket, but the 10-pin doesn't go. Cross lane, picks off the 10. And now let's see if Tony Westlake can add to the lead. He's on a double, and he's up now in the seventh frame. On the lane that he struck on every time, three for three over here. Right back at him, this time with the light hit on lane 16. Not his ace release. He saw his hand came, kind of come over the top of the ball that time, but the dry part of the lane threw it back into the one three pocket. Tony up by 12. Could extend it to 22. With a strike here in the eighth. Rick Steelsmith is next. And our top seed, Mike Alby. And looking to become only the seventh player in PBA history to win 20 or more titles in his career. Oh, pretty shot there. He went right straight up with that one all the way through. And Billy Oaks is in a must-strike situation. Down 22. He's got to put it. May not be enough even if he takes it out the sheet. Came from behind in match number one to win. And, of course, we've got baseball coming up on Sunday night as uh, the Yankees and the White Sox will tangle at 8 o'clock Eastern Time exclusive coverage on ESPN. And our Indians have caught those Yankees. That's right. Big game tonight at the stadium. Nagy and Roger Clemens, right? Right. Fastball by Bill Oaks and a strike on lane 16. And the biggest shot of the week coming up for him right now. In order to have any chance to win this match, he has to strike here, and he knows it. Possible 238 for Bill Oaks. Westlake has room for 260. It usually beats 238. Yeah. That's what Bill's thinking. Bill Oaks fights back with a key double in the eighth and the ninth. Now all he can do is sit back and watch Tony Westlake. And he's not hoping anything bad happens to Tony. He's just hoping he gets tapped. More room. Two pin stands. The first time that Westlake does not strike on lane 16. A little extra speed and just did not make it back, but he got nine out of it, which was a big pin because he could still strike it on the 10th for 239. We see 18.6. You know, he's swinging it out about four and a half boards there. Boy, the ball's still at six and a half and 45 feet. Had a chance to talk to Tony and ask him. How tough is it to defend a title out here on the PBA National Tour? I think it's very difficult. Uh, Del Ballard did it this year, and the last time before that was Walter Ray in, uh, in Edmond in 86 and 7. And I don't know before that. It's been a while. So uh, it's difficult, but I'm going to give it my best shot tonight. Tony ahead by 11. Powerful yeah. shot. Powerful shot there. Watch the six pin here. When we get the up close look here, comes in and that six comes out of the channel to get that ten. That just indicates the ball was alive with heavy fingers. 18.6 miles per hour. He's been pretty steady with that kind of speed, but he swung that one. It just seemed like more. This one puts him in the 230s. Got a handful, maybe too much. And that's exactly the case. All Tony can do is shake his head. 
He's almost uh, relegated to going for the three here, Dan. That would give him 228 and force Oaks to get two strikes in the tenth again on that same right lane like he did against Porco in order to win the match. Well, he got him all. It really doesn't matter. Classy shot by Tony Westlake, but he wanted the shot in the 11th back. He makes the 3-6. The three, four, six, ten. There we go. Clean game, two twenty-nine. And Bill Oaks can come out a winner. And Oaks, who has struck every time on this right lane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got her pocket all the way. Yeah. Woo. Westlake hoping for anything but a strike here on a Bill Oaks. Well, we've had two exciting matches. Oaks has had the pressure on him both times, having to strike out in the 10th frame to win. Right now, the count is academic. He strikes here, he wins. He doesn't strike, he loses. Westlake has to reach out and give him high five because that's what it's about on the PBA Tour. Well, Tony's done that to enough players over his PBA career, too. He knows what it's like to have to step up there and throw those strikes, and he has a reputation of being a great clutch bowler. So when somebody does it against him, he appreciates the effort. Stay behind the line. Get a couple more. And it's on to the semifinal game for Bill Oates, whose confidence is building here at Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay. He is already disposed of Forkel and Westlake. And when we come back, an interview with our top seed. Hey, want to meet the team? Just head over to McDonald's for these exciting USA Olympic Basketball Collector Cups. Some are more exciting than others. Some better look and get one free. Free? When you buy any large soft drink. Large, like me. All of them have exciting action graphics and player stats. Not bad. For a limited time, team one up with large fries and a big beefy triple cheeseburger, and you've got yourself the gold medal meal. What you want is what you get. At McDonald's today. Gold medal? I'll take two. And that was dinner for our favorite food critic. Everything was wonderful. Something else to drink, monsieur. Yes, make it a Bud Light, please. I'm sorry, monsieur. We have run out. Really? Well, that does change things a bit, doesn't it? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Billy's Chili. Quaint atmosphere. Is that a chip or did you just lose some change? Charming service. You're about to see the power of subliminal advertising. Now, can you name bowling's hookingest and bashingest new ball? It's the new Rhino Pro. 100% urethane in a conventional two-piece design. Only at your local pro shop. which side of the abortion issue you're on, we've got news for you. It may already be decided why Roe versus Wade is moved. If it's important to you, you'll find it in time. The Volvo International, a midsummer showdown of the world's greatest shock makers taking aim at a key U.S. Open tune-off. The Volvo International begins Monday at 1.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. Bill Oaks, with another outstanding clutch performance, finishes with a five-bagger and beats Tony Westlake in the 10th frame, 238 to 229. Bill Oaks now averaging 247.5 on the championship round pair. And, of course, next week will be live Thursday night on August 20th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And that, of course, is the ABC West Lanes Open. Then, of course, the following week, the MNI PBA Senior Championship. Gene Stuss, the defending champ there, live from Thruway Lanes in Cheektowaga, New York. It's time now to 
shift gears and send this down to Mike and Mike. And uh, is Mike Jordan around as well, Mr. Durbin? Thank you, Denny. Thank you, Denny. Mike, this week, two 300 games. You've averaged 240. You had a block where you uh, shot 1577. Why the explosion here this week? Well, for me, uh, two weeks ago, my best term of the year, I bowled real well in San Antonio. Had a smooth stroke, which uh, enabled me to carry real well, and I did that again this week. Was able not to hit the ball, just glided it down the lane, let the lane take it into the pocket, and that's why my carry was so well. What do you mean, not hit the ball? Well, I'm just trying to, to leave with the ring finger, keep it low and long, not hit up on it, and just uh, scoot it down the lane, let the back end take it into the pocket. You know, a few years back, I used to hear you talk a lot about having fun while you were bowling. Explain to us what that means. Well, it really means is enjoying yourself when you're out there, all parts of the game, whether shooting spares, throwing strikes, uh, match play, bowling on the show tonight, it doesn't matter. You have to enjoy what you're doing to do well at it. Uh, it's been real fun this week, uh, you know, and, and maybe the last couple of years it hasn't been so fun for me. I've made it more of a job. So uh, last part of the summer I tried to relax a little bit, get back to having fun, enjoying uh, just life on the road and the tour. Okay. Let's talk about another subject here. 19 wins. If you win tonight, it's 20. You join a select group, only six other guys. How important is that to Mike Albee? Well, I think any title is important. Obviously, this is a big one. Uh, it would give me 20, plus it's been a great week for me. So uh, they're all important. It's been a while since I've won. Uh, when I led in Cleveland, I didn't come out very strong. I didn't feel confident the way I was throwing the ball. This week, I feel real good. I feel like I bowled real well. I feel much better tonight, and I feel like I can go out there and do it. Okay, you're over 30 now, Mike. If you win, it, it, it's 20 wins. What, what's the future for Mike Albee? Well, 32, actually, but... Uh, I'm just going to, uh, as long as I feel like I can have fun at it and enjoy it, uh, I'm going to stay out here and bowl. Uh, I want to stay in the bowling industry in some aspect, but uh, I'm not anywhere near retiring like all my good friends seem to be slowing down now, Bob Hanley and uh, Steve Cook, so uh, they're slowing down some, but I still feel like bowling. What, what's your game plan when you're coming out? Are you going to start first and then get two strikes on the board early? Well, I really don't know. I'm going to see what the pair like. Uh, you know, I just, what I look at is, is what the lane I want to finish on where I can throw strikes. That's the lane I want to finish on. I don't care whether I start or finish last. It doesn't matter. I just want to be able to finish with strikes. Good luck to you. Thanks, Mike. All right. We're going to find out whether Bill Oaks can continue his hot hand as he takes on former Rookie of the Year, Rick Steelsmith. Now, don't go away. We'll be right back. Where's everybody going? Why, they're all headed to Clearview Lanes and Hennigan's for their Old Fashioned Days. Old Fashioned Days? That's right. For three consecutive weekends in August, you can enjoy the prices of the good old days. Bowl for 50 cents a game and get a hamburger for just 99 cents at Hennigan's. What a great deal. It sure is, but you'd better hurry. It's only the first three weekends in August. Come to the Old Fashioned Days at Hennigan's and Clearview Lanes, Route 230 in Mount Joy. I'm John Walsh of America's Most Wanted. The average cable thief doesn't look like most of our fugitives. In fact, they're a lot like you, law-abiding citizens who wouldn't think of committing a crime. Yet illegally receiving cable TV signals is a crime and punishable by stiff penalties. So why take the risk? It's not worth it. Contact your local cable operator and get on the right side of the law. Baseball's biggest surprises, San Diego's Gary Sheffield takes on Barry Larkin in the Reds, leading off ESPN's Friday Night Doubleheader. Bill Oaks rubs off the sliding foot, fresh from another come-from-behind victory, and now he takes on Rick Steelsmith. Two guys who in the past both have had losing records in the championship round, uh, although Oaks now is over the 500 mark. What a performance on the right-hand lane, but he starts this match on lane 15. Right where he left off with a strike. His confidence has to be soaring, Denny, but he has to, you know, keep those emotions under control. He still has two more matches to bowl and hopefully win for him. I wonder what percentage Robert Lawrence gets if Bill Oaks wins tonight. Probably a big dinner. Yeah. Steak dinner, you bet. player who is just now beginning to get back to where he was physically about five years ago. You know, and he told me that uh, he, he tore the ligament that keeps the shoulder and the and the kind of the bicep there together. I don't know exactly which it is, but he talked about it. He said it was because of this tremendously high backswing that he used to have that he kept putting pressure and pressure and pressure on it and it finally just gave. 
at the height of his amateur career, the ball at the top of the swing was way over his head. He was a power player at once. Comes out with a couple of strikes now. Can Bill Oates continue to maintain the pace of averaging 247 a game in the championship round? I think it's a matter of carry and a matter of him maintaining the speed. Uh, you know, in a one-game match, you start leaving tens, it's hard to win. But he left tens last game and still pulled that game out. four pin and that was close good speed just a little snap at the end there you're gonna leave those and then you pick it up and you move on to the next frame so the new Bill Oaks won't worry about the shot that he threw on 16 well that's probably what he's telling himself in his self-talk right now he's gonna say you know make the spare move on and uh, what happened on that shot I did this or that or whatever he's been near perfect this evening Billy stands pretty straight up here, holds the ball down low, little shuffle step to start, and then virtually no push away, just kind of walks by the ball, creeps by it, and then forces it through with muscle at the end. But he's extremely accurate because of that short backswing, and he gets uh, all his speed from the strength in his upper body. And I want to his wife Patty and children Lauren and Nicholas are watching and Lawton, Oklahoma, pulling for Dad. And he comes back with a strike on lane 15. You know, he got to this point one time at, uh, a year or two ago when he won the first two games in Seattle and then lost and won the finishing third in the tournament. So I, that's probably flirting around the back of his mind. This young man, though, gets more on the bowling ball with less effort than anybody I've ever seen. Great timing, great feel for the game. Steady head. That shot came off rolling and maybe a little too much as he's left with the dubious Durbin on the right hand lane. The 3, 6, 9, 10. He, he just got that to the dry part of the lane too quick and it just grabbed right away. He was puzzled with that. He, he thought he made a halfway decent shot. As much as he hooks it, he shouldn't have trouble with this. <laughs> Anybody has trouble with this, Denny. He's going to send it out to the channel and probably hook it back to try and get the spare though. No, you were right. He didn't have any trouble with it at all. Let's see how high that backswing is with Rick Steelsmith. Now, this new Rick Steelsmith, nice, smooth, fluid, five-step bowler, pushes the ball out now in the second step. It's balls right in time. Now, watch as he hits the next to the last step. That ball's still real high over his head, but it used to be higher. He's cut that down. Oh, he's taking 20% off of that, at least. It's still up there, though. This has got a big-time roll on it. Ball takes the five-pin out. Steel Smith comes back with a strike in the fourth and leads by six. But Bill Oaks with an X here could retake the lead. And remember, Steve, Steel Smith's just throwing just a 15-pound ball, hitting that hard with just a 15-pound ball. For many years, Mike Alden threw a 15-pound ball. He still does occasionally. Bang! Oaks is throwing nothing but a bulldozer. He's throwing nothing but bullets. I'll tell you, when he keeps it tight in against the oil, that ball goes nowhere and he, but right to the pocket and hits like a ton. Trying to climb the ladder. How tough it is to win four games in a championship round, especially when the scores are high. Especially when the scores are high. You're right there, Danny. Up by four can increase it to 14. Got the 10 out. What a nice, pretty carry there. Well, he's picking up on the left-hand lane where he left on the right-hand lane. He's got three consecutive strikes on 15. Well, I think if you asked him, he would probably say, I like them both. I mean, <laughs> how can you not? The, the score is easy. Rick Steelsmith opts for a re-rack on lane 16. He also is on a strike, and if he would strike on 16 in the fifth frame, it'd be a four-pin match. And he knows in the back of his mind he cannot let Oaks get too far ahead of him. He's got to keep the pressure on him.
Well, he was running that out all the way, but the speed was slightly soft, got it out there, and when it turned left, it wasn't stopping. See, it looked like he moved in a little bit, but it gets out here about to the sixth board, and it's gone right now. And there are key shots, you know, in a one-game match. We see the speed at 17.7, much slower than what Oaks is throwing. Full mile per hour almost uh, slower than what Oaks is throwing. Plus, he's arcing it so much more than say, the same reason. He's covering about eight more boards, too. Down by 28 at the halfway point. A little speed control, perhaps. The only difference between Oaks and Steel Smith. But right there, the man with a hot hand, Billy Oaks, leads by 28. White. Straight on white. Those are great. Wow! These are light? Give me more! Wait, 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 wait. Let's put Pringles Light up against these bag chips. There's 25% less fat in Pringles than in these. You're talking my language. And they're a lot less greasy. A lot less. That's great. Fantastic. These are great. Won't you pop, pop, pop. You, you, you can't stop. But I don't have to. People don't stay at La Quinta Inn just because of the refreshing swimming pool. However, it does create quite a splash. Call 1-800-531-5900. La Quinta Inn's, America's hotel value. This is La Quinta Inn's new money-saving super value rates coupon. And if you can't find one, just tell them you saw it on TV. Call La Quinta and ask for the new super value rates from 3450. Bill Oaks on a three-bagger, leads by 28, and is in a position now, Mike, where uh, he could create some breathing room for himself. He hasn't been able to do that in the first two games. And that's part of match game bowling. When you get that opportunity, you have to just, you know, literally take advantage of it, step on that opponent. The message? It's interrupted. Busy signal. Fans, now you can feel them starting to pull for Bill Oaks, who's number yeah, one. Yeah, you can, the crowd seems to be, he, he's their favorite right now. The American way to root for the undergun dog. Yep. They found themselves a horse, and they're trying to ride him to victory. You know one thing, he's going up against one of the best of all time in Mike Albee, if he gets to the title match. He's not there yet. <laughs> Rick Steele Smith <laughs> is not done yet. He's going to figure out something on that right lane. 27 pins of difference, but we got four full frames to go yet. So all Oaks wants to do now is get another X back up there to work on. And in game number three, lane 15 has been the kind lane. And still is. If you ever put them together, look out, huh? Well, I would imagine it would be key in any match you bowled in the championship round to know that you could strike on one of the two lanes. Oh, well, yeah. It's just, especially if you know that the only problem with one of the two lanes is carry. You know you, know you can hit the pocket. It, it, it plays in your mind if you can't hit the pocket, and that's what Rick has to figure out now is how to hit the pocket on this right lane. It's got to keep the speed up. Moved in. And paid the price as he almost had the seven and the ten. They'll blow out 7-10, but the 7-pin falls, but uh, but no strike. In around the 13th board, out to about the 7th board, comes in and destroys the 5, but it goes in front, both the head pin and the 7 go in front, or the head pin and the 5 go in front of the 7. I didn't get a chance to see that bowler track. Uh, here we are. Boy, from 12 and a half to 6, belly at 6 boards at that point at 15 feet. A little bit more speed, though. We see the last one was 17.7. This is 18.2. The difference, the soft 10 from 4.6. The intense look of Rick Steelsmith swung that ball way out. And another strike on the left-hand lane. He's been perfect on 15. But Bill Oates is going to look to put him away right here with a double. 
The best Rick can get if he goes out now is 222. If Billy strikes here, puts him in the 220s right now. Parity for Bill Oaks as he continues to strike on the left-hand lane. Let's see what happens on lane 16. Oh! Bill Oaks, is he a man of destiny tonight, Mike Durbin? You know, it's interesting. In practice, he was swinging it out to the gutter and back. He came to me at the end of the practice session. He says, that gutter looks enticing. He says, but he says, I'm moving in where there's a little more oil and I can go straighter. And I wondered at the time whether he's making the right move. I guess he knew what he was doing. Four and the ten were up there. And he has had several of those as Dwight Petty, the president of Red Carpet Lanes, looks on, having a good time. They own eight bowling centers in the state of Wisconsin. Right now he needs to make the spare. That forces Steel Smith to strike it out to make him mark. It's the little things, the high hits that don't end up in splits that sometimes make the difference. And he's not made a mistake. Maintain that even composure. 222 tops for Rick Steelsmith. Just never could figure it out on the right lane, you know. Uh, the, the two shots back in the third frame and the fifth frame that both went high just put him in a quandary on this right lane. In this match's history. Steel Smith will fall to two and eight in his championship round play. Big hook at the two and the eight. After baseball tonight. And you'll see Sports Center, and there is a list of the key stories. John Daly, I wonder how he played today in St. Louis. Well, what they were telling me, that course is super tough, too. Oh. They've got a 485-yard par four. <laughs> ah, Steele Smith took <laughs> his first fortunate shot. You can. Look at the demeanor at this point in time. Here's a young player that was billed as a superstar who's had physical problems and, and has just done nothing but fight, 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 and he's still not back to the point where he can let it go. And it's interesting, you know, he can wind up here with seven strikes on the left lane, eight strikes in the game, and not even be close. Nice free stroke. Another strike that has not yet even scratched the surface in terms of his talent out here on the national tour. You know, but that, that uh, dreaded word of potential uh, uh, just kind of hangs like a Damocles sword over your head sometimes. You know, when, when you don't seem to achieve it, and the years start clicking by. I think he will. I really do. I think when he gets back to 100%, he, he's going to be one of the top five or six players on the tour. He's working at it, I'll tell you that. Applauds the break, albeit a little late. What a game of 202 and eight strikes. Bill Oakes is going to be bowling for his first title, Mike Durbin. What's going to happen during this commercial break? He's getting to get himself ready, mentally ready for that, that big game, the biggest game of his career. Bill Oakes has won three consecutive games. Rick Steele Smith finishes third, and when we come back, it's Oakes and Albee for the title here in Green Bay. This is the end of how you think about dandruff shampoo, of head and shoulders as you now know it. Now it's better. Because new head and shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts to help prevent flakes. Hey, would you try this with your ordinary shampoo? I think not. No other shampoo has this formula. New head and shoulders. This could be the end of flakes. Period. If you're hungry for the gold, you practice, practice, practice. 
unless you're just hungry to go to McDonald's, where for a limited time, you can get a big, beefy, triple cheeseburger for a big guy, like myself. Big guy, Mikey. And when you team one up with large fries and a large soft drink in a free USA Olympic Basketball Collector Cup, you've got yourself the gold medal meal. What you want is what you get. At McDonald's today. Gold medal? It's in the bag. Sports Illustrated gets you ready for the excitement of NFL football in his amazing new video, the 1992 Pro Football Spectacular. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Stay at home if you don't want to get hit. Call this toll-free number now and get the best of last season, plus Sports Illustrated's view of next year's champions. If I were to pick one right now, I'd say the Dallas Cowboys. Plus, you'll also receive a second video free with your paid subscription. You'll get the NFL video of your favorite team, no matter which team you prefer. Pick any one of the 2018 videos. It's your choice. Free from Sports Illustrated. Your team video will take you through the 91 season from the end zones to the locker rooms. Plus, you'll know what's new for 92. Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your two free videos and 30 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.49 an issue. Save 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. You'll catch the best of the year with your two free videos and Sports Illustrated. Call now. Championship frame is brought to you by Midas. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Tonight, nobody beats Bill. Oh, that's correct. The second one in the tenth in the first game. He had to have this to win the first match. And watch and see what happens. Is it the room? Oracle started with seven, but it wasn't enough as Oaks puts him in the 250 category. He went on to get one more and win 257 to 255. What a way to start, and I hate to be redundant, but as we look into championship frame and the key shot at game number two is Bill Oaks again in the 10th frame. Same scenario, he needed two in the 10th on the right lane. This is the second one right here. Tighter line this time, and perfect. A bullet to the pocket, and a 238 to 229 victory over the defending champion, Tony Westlake. Into match number three, and the heat really wasn't on in the 10th frame. No, he just needed a couple of pins. Keep it on the lane. Don't go over the foul line. He did what he always does in the 10th frame. Pow! Bill Oaks on his way to his first PBA title. Who knows? The man standing in his way, though, is Mike Albee. And Albee averaged 240 this week, 269 on this pair of legs. When a muffler goes, some people look for a cheap replacement. They think it costs less. Fact is, they can get a quality Midas muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, a guaranteed economizer muffler starting at $24.95. Fact is, installed by experts starting at $24.95. So when somebody says they have a cheaper muffler than Midas, they're right. When they say they're better, fact is, they're wrong. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas. Because you go all out, oh. you got a stink. Not if you're wearing this. And here comes your chance to prove it. And you will, because because Old Spice works. Man, does it work? Spice wetness kills bacteria. The proof? Hey, hot shot. You're looking at her. <laughs> Old Spice antiperspirant for great odor protection. You demand proof, not promises. Iron Mike on rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. Holium? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... Ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough. Exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread. It stayed tough. Do you want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. What a study in contrast. Mike Albee has won 19 times in his career. Hall of Famer. And Bill Oaks trying to win for the very first time. And uh, maybe an omen on his final fill ball. Albee left a solid nine. The player always loves to see a bad break like that in practice. Bill Oaks averaging 2.44 this evening. And throwing that thing pretty much the same in the title match as he did in the last three games. 
You know, it's interesting. Every one of these guys has made him finish on the right lane, and he's got 16 strikes on that lane so far. He could throw seven more this game. If it was me, I'd make him finish on, like, lane seven or eight. <laughs> player Mike Albee is he affected not in the least Mr. Durbin <laughs> you know interesting he's talking about not trying to hit the ball just kind of let it come off the hand easy and stroke it and let the ball just carry down the, the guys were saying that his ball was rolling out at 30 feet this week and he just never missed the pocket And watch him as he swings it out to the channel. At about 40 feet, it's on one or two and comes back. We see it's at three and a half at 45 feet and made it back to board 17. And then said something coming back. I don't know what he said. Only 17.1 miles from. I mean, that's like a cross-country trek. Oh! And the first bad pocket break of the night for Bill Oaks. A solid eight pin. What Albie had said was that somebody snapped a camera right when he let the ball go. Didn't flinch, threw the strike, and they had enough presence of mind to remind the photographers that you're not allowed to do that. That's experience. Plus, you know, Albie leaving that solid nine in practice, Oaks leaving it on a strike when he could keep pace, you know, that has just let the air out of the balloon a little bit. Because he's knowing that Albie may not stop striking. This man has fought tooth and nail since the opening shot. Came from behind against Forkel. Came from behind against Westlake. Whew. Stays with it. Told it to hold it up. And again, through the nose this time, a huge break. But see, the, the letdown on that, Denny, I mean, he didn't strike on the right lane, and so he lost concentration on this shot. He's thinking about the eight pin still. His mind really wasn't full attention on this shot. He gets the good break, leaves only the 6-10. Cross lane, plenty of speed and a spare in the third. Poor Bill Oaks. Haven't seen much of that tonight. Back-to-back -to -back spares on that young man. Well, he's bowling. <laughs> a guy that's made over a million two hundred thousand dollars in one nineteen. You know, look at that record on TV. I'll tell you what. That's in sixty-one appearances. This is his second, sixty-second right now. Astonishing winning percentage in the championship round. again says he's got problems with a still photographer and yet he has three consecutive strikes he said same thing sure not bothering him any i'll tell you what he just keeps throwing strikes trouble is he'll get to the line wait for the click this time and it won't happen well he hopes it doesn't happen i mean although it's definitely in his mind See if he's out there saying oh i'm still trying to have fun thing is, is he's a still photographer himself. <laughs> he loves it. No click, but a strike nevertheless for Albie, who is fighting all the way to the bank. Wow, I'll tell you what. The only thing that might stop him is a solid thing. Throttles wide open for Albie. Meanwhile, Bill Oates, after he kicks out the nine, I think is operating on fumes. The tank is no longer full. He can recharge it so somewhat, then, if he can double here. I mean, actually, he has to strike here. I think it's the head pin that gets the nine. The ball finishes so hard, the ball chops the five off the nine, and the head pin does come out and gets a little clip from the nine pin. The head pin has been a busy customer for Mr. Oaks tonight. It has. 
the lead to 22. And to get back in touch with Mike Alby. Has to hurry. Oh, his worst shot of the night. And he's lost touch. If he doesn't make the spare, this match is almost over. In the Just didn't get out of it correctly. Sent it wide. It didn't come back. First time all night that it hasn't. He knew he was in trouble. Can't cover up the washout. And for Bill Oates. What just a couple of minutes ago was a dreamlike performance yeah. now is back to reality. And it's so disappointing. You know, you bowl so well, and a solid eight was a key shot. But this tonight is a performance that he can build on confidence wise. I'll be out at the one board. Back in for five in a row, and he's just liable to treat us all to something special tonight. And we see, you know, the six players ahead of him that have won 20 or more titles. Marshall Holman, the last one to go into that group. All of them Hall of Famers. An impressive list. Hmm. The only reason Albee is not a Hall of Famer is he's not 35. That's right. He's got to be 35 to be eligible. He's 32, and three more years he'd be voted right in. You and I were talking to him, and he's talking about being one of the veterans. What's that make us? At least you. <laughs> Six in a row for Mike Albee. An explanation point. And the only question left in this game is will he shoot 300? He's explaining to everyone that he is the man. Bill Oaks mounted up. Terrific effort tonight, but he's run into somebody that just has a terrific shot. are enjoying this one though, aren't they? Well, they haven't given it up. Come on, Bill. <laughs> That's right. Come on, horse. You can do it down the stretch. Uh, well, I made a comment. I said, this is a performance he can build on, but you still have to win. I think so, yeah. Kurt Rose, the uh, vice president of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America. And, of course, the Wisconsin Bowling Proprietors are the ones that are really responsible for this tournament in Green Bay. How about a trip of the two pin? Body English won't get the job done, and Bill Oakes is thinking about second place. Well, realistically, uh, when he didn't strike in the fifth frame, almost <laughs> when he didn't, when he left a solid eight pin, he was almost locked out at that point. The way Albi is going. I still can't believe that one stat about Albee when he had the, the huge block. He struck on 35 of 37 shots at 20 in a row at one stage. you got to realize that's crossing lanes, too, Dan. That's a different pair every time. I mean, and you think about averaging 240 for uh, a tournament, that's a six-bagger a game for 42 games. He's already got six. And now he's got seven. <laughs> Another word back to Chuck Pisano and John Campos concerning the still photographer, and still he continues to strike. See, the viewers at home, what you don't realize is, is it is dead silent here when these players are throwing these shots. So any, any, yeah, we have like a, the camera, we have a curtain hear. setting up for still photographers to be behind to take shots, but they're supposed to wait until the guy lets go of the ball before they click the camera. It was only about six weeks ago that Mr. Stuck <laughs> shot 300 on ESPN. We're liable to see another perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, Albie has definitely got it in mind. I mean, look at this reaction. You thought he got the 12th one on this, and it's only eight. Either that or he was selling Toyotas. Did you see that jump? Vertical leap that time for Albie. And right now, Bill Oaks is just trying to get out of the way. You're not kidding. A great performance by Oaks, but now... It's time for Albi to maybe shoot 300 and win his 20th title. What a night that would be. <laughs> Down by 84. <laughs> oh, what a tough game for Bill. Oh, now it's 85, all right. Boy, Billy just 
really bold, tremendous tonight. And what do you do with a guy that opens with eight in a row? <laughs> you got to start answering. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I tell you, the, the solid eight, I think, just stopped it all right then and there. Oh, now he leaves the four nine. <laughs> A rye slide by Billy Oaks to Sade. I got beat by the better player here in the title game. Albee looking away, trying to focus, trying to get the blood pressure and the heart rate down. And this guy is as good as anybody that's ever played the game in that capacity. Well, plus, we got people running back and forth behind the screen to tell people, don't snap that camera right now. You know, Albee's had two this week already, Dan, and we've had seven this week. He averaged 269 on this pair of lanes as you look back at all the 300 games this week, so he's right, right now right on average. So, Danny, you want to talk about it or should I? Keep in mind, the good folks at Brunswick are offering $50,000 for a 300 game with that bowling ball and 10 more from the PBA would be a $60,000 game. And the reason it's not worth more is because Mike is not wearing a Brunswick shirt. Yep. So. And you tack on the 18 for first place and we're up at 78. Big frame. Nice round figure. He likes it. Settle down, Mr. Durbin, as Bill Oaks can do nothing now but cheer all beyond. Well, everybody's cheering all beyond at this point in time. The crowd, he wants a re-rack on the left lane. All right, is that because the pins are not on spot, or does he want a little breather? I don't think he wants a breather. I think Mike is so calm and collected that he's just ready to throw the shot. You look at him, he is poised, he's ready. All we can do is watch. Gave it plenty of room, Mike Durbin. Gave it the room without the good lift. Oh, boy. Ten in a row, 289. Oh, well, he did better than his average. <laughs> That's right. He's averaging better than 270. He's liable to move to Green Bay and just stay right on this pair of lanes. What a game. 20 career titles, and it was this close to a 300. He just never had a chance. The one pin has to hit the three, and it just barely clipped it. But if that three pin would have fallen back and hit that other pin, it might have knocked over the nine. Well, he got the break on the light hit in the 10th frame, but he couldn't cave him in in the 11th. I and thought when he got that that he was going to come back, and, and that would juice him up, and he would make a great shot the next one, but he didn't. That was the only marginal shot after the first nine. Bill Oaks finishes second, and we'll be back to wrap things up from Red Carpet Lanes because Albee already has wrapped up his 20th career title. It's not easy to pull yourself away from a bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Raisins. Two scoops that taste too good to pull yourself away. Two scoops that taste too good in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Two scoops. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste, why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different, but dry. Bud Dry is one beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. So why not come around to something refreshingly different? Try Bud Dry. 
July 1992, Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab, further than the test track, the Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. Achieva, quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. At the first tickly inch of athlete's foot, Desimax. Killing those grungy fungi before they get racket and burden. Go get that can now, or else don't blame Desimax. 289 to 172. A lopsided victory, almost shot 300. Gary Hartel has a beautiful trophy. Mike, it's my pleasure to present this trophy with you on your 20th victory, a most number one, I'm sure. Thank you. All right, and Kathy Nagel also has a nice check. Worth $18,000. Well, thanks, Gary, and thanks, Kathy. Uh, it's, I do enjoy coming to Green Bay and, and Red Carpet Lanes, and uh, it was such a great week for me all week that... Uh, I really didn't want to let this one get away from me because I felt like I bowled so well. And I read in the paper today that it said they'd li I'd like to finish the way I started the tournament with the first 10 and 289, and look what happened. <laughs> Seeing is believing. We'll be back for a final comment from a man who now has 20 titles on the PBA Tour. The Dodge factory authorized clearance. Get up to 3183 total savings on Dakota. Dakota 4x4 Club Cab, four wheelers pickup of the year. With an available new Magnum V8, it can outhaul, out tow any comparable Ford, Chevy, or import compact. See the Dodge dealer nearest you for the new Dodge you'll want to put in your garage. Don't be bored by the same old lunch routine. Dine outdoors on Thursdays this summer at the downtown Elizabethtown Lunch Series. Every Thursday is a treat of taste and tunes with a variety of live entertainment from noon until 1. And lunch will be offered from 11.30 until 1.30 on the square at the corner of Market and East High Streets. Sponsored by Elizabethtown Central Business District Commission. The Downtown Elizabethtown Lunch Series. It's the cool way to enjoy a Thursday summer lunch. ESPN Home Video presents Practical Jokes on the Pros, a home video featuring baseball, basketball, and football stars that you'll watch over and over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, yeah? The hilarious Practical Jokes on the Pros. The championship round finals of the Green Bay Classic are being brought to you by United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Desinex. If you don't know the score, don't blame Desinex. 20 titles, and I know you have a lot of people to thank. Well, I really do, you know. Uh, 20 titles took me a long time, and... Uh, Don Mitchell, Ron Atkins, my good friends that helped me out on the road and everything. Thank you very much. My mom and dad, everything you've done for me. My son, Christopher, and my wife, Tammy. I love you all. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, we bid you adieu from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Next week, the PBA Summer Tour makes its way to Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania for the championship round finals of the ABC West Lanes Open beginning at 7.30 Eastern Time, Thursday, August 20th, live on ESPN.